Department of Science and Technology's PNRI or Philippine Nuclear Research Institute revealed that operations against illicit uranium trade began after they got a tip from the International Atomic Energy Agency or IEA, IAEA. That was earlier this year. Now, according to the DOST PNRI's director, Dr. Carlo Arcilia, a whistleblower provided the IAEA with information that there is an underground network operating in the Philippines that is involved in the illicit sale of uranium. Now, this raised concerns, especially because depleted uranium is a radioactive material and the enriched form of which is key to making nuclear bombs. Just last week, the NBI presented three individuals arrested in Pasay for coddling metal bars and black powder, all of which tested positive for uranium. Let's get more details on that story from Dr. Carlo Arcelia himself, the director of DOST's PNRI. Good evening, Doc. Can you hear us okay? Yeah, good evening. Uh, yeah, glad to be here. Okay, were you shocked? That apparently the Philippines is part of the uh, underground network in the illicit or illegal trade of uranium. Okay, first, uh, the uh, this uranium is depleted uranium, right? So it means it's not as dangerous as the enriched uranium that's used for a nuclear fuel. Mm -hmm. Okay, in fact, the the uranium, the useful uranium, the uranium two thirty five has been taken out, and only a small amount remains. Mm -hmm. But the depleted uranium is very dense and hard, and it is an ideal material for projectiles, bala, mm -hmm. ammunition, mm -hmm. because it can penetrate uh, armor. Yes, okay. and that, the more dangerous part uh, is the powdered one, because you can mix it with conventional uh, explosives, and it becomes a dirty bomb. Because the only danger from depleted uranium uh, powder is if you inhale it, mm -hmm. And uh, it's an alpha emitter, and uh, if that alpha emitter is inside your body, that can cause cancer. Yeah, but uh, the other uh, but scary... Yeah. You're, you're right, Dr. Arcelia, but the other scary thing is, um, of course, a lot of people panicked, especially, you know, I think the most publicized trade was the one down in Cagayan de Oro, and it was found in a subdivision, like my uh, nag test positive, right, for traces of uranium-235 and 238. But um, a lot of people are also saying is, itong mga depleted uranium, sino ba yung bumibili niyan? It's uh, terrorist organizations now. Exactly what you said, to make uh, weapons. Right. Yeah, so, it, yeah, it's uh, again, it's uh, it, it's for uh, uh, not, definitely not for nuclear bombs. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, the the thing is this: uh, the when we got the tip from the IEA, uh, the uh, some persons went to a DOST uh, DOST office to try to identify it. Their modus operandi is uh, to actually sell the material to pass it off as precious metals like platinum. May mga maluloko sila, no? So, uh, uh, and then, because then they could earn millions from that. But I don't think they were sophisticated because they didn't know how to handle the materials. And in fact, uh, one, of the, one of the condominiums where it was found is there in Pasay. Actually, it's, it's an upscale condominium. It's right beside Marriott, at the behind Marriott. Mm -hmm. So uh, mm -hmm. one of the condominiums there. And we, our, our, our people actually try to decontaminate it. So they've had these materials for some time. Oh. And, and uh, unfortunately, even there were kids in this apartment. And we would have wanted to actually have the kids analyzed for cytogenetic uh, mm -hmm. uh, analysis to see if their DNA has been affected by this material. Mm -hmm. uh, now... The, the ironic thing about this is that when these people who were caught were charged, we had to charge them under our law, mm -hmm. uh, Republic Act 2207 mm -hmm. of 1968, drafted mm -hmm. before all of you were born. Mm -hmm. And uh, the punishment for illegal sales of unlicensed uranium is 10,000 pesos oh. mm -hmm. plus and five years imprisonment. Napakamura daw, eh. Ginikas na lang, nagpiansa na yung dalawa. <laughs> Balikan anyway, natin, doctor, so, yung uh, sinabi mo about the kids in the condominium. Maya do, po, Maya. Yun nga, eh, meron ba tayong capacity? I guess some of the um, immediate thoughts, no? Number one, yung mga bata na affected. Do we have uh, the, the facilities, the capability to test them? And then yes, second, yes. do we have the facilities and capability to decontaminate the affected areas? Yeah, no, we, we have the, you know, we have the tools. Actually, uh, had... <laughs> 
And, you know, last week was our Atomic Energy Week uh, with an open house here at PNRI. We have very nice facilities here. You could have even, even see some samples of depleted uranium. I mean, my people there are wearing hazmats because they didn't know what the things were. But but we have also uh, enriched uranium here uh, in, in, in our facility because we have a research reactor. It's an active reactor. It's not for power, but uh, we've been we've had this for more than 50 years. You know, the, you know, the eight log in Commonwealth Avenue, now hidden by TechnoHub. Mm. That's a containment structure of uh, our research reactor. Oh. It's been here for more than, for almost like 60 years. And we built another one, actually. And so uh, PNRI has advanced uh, equipment, and then we have very good people. We're not that big. Mm -mm. Actually, interestingly, just today, uh, we came, I just, I'm wearing a barong like this. I just came from the Senate. Uh -huh. Our new nuclear law has been filed. Uh, to create the independent uh, uh, nuclear regulatory body, which will be called Phil Atom. Doctor, doctor, uh, I'm sorry we're running out of time, but uh, just as a final uh, question, um, how worried should we be? How do we detect this? Uh, can it be smelled by the, the, the dogs in, in, for, for, in our transport hubs? Uh, second question is, where do we get the supply? Where do they get the supply? Are we a producer of uranium? Okay, thank you, ma'am. Let's answer the first one. We shouldn't worry about it because even if it's 100 kilograms, uh, you know, uh, first they were caught by the NBI. And, and uh, as I said, it cannot be made into a nuclear bomb, but the powdered form could have been made into uh, uh, a dirty bomb. But it looks like the people who were caught were, you know, were not after, they were after making money. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, they, they didn't have the sophistication. Mm -hmm. Now, this didn't come from the Philippines. This is trafficked into the Philippines because we don't have uranium. We have uranium ore, some a small amount, maybe somewhere in Larap, uh, Bicol, mm -hmm. but we don't produce it. So it was brought inside the country, and that's that's the worrying part because someone trafficked this. Now, in the port of Cebu and and uh, and uh, Manila, there are radiation detectors, like in our office. Mm -hmm. So if a container van passes through, and it has. Uh, nuclear materials inside, some alarms will be wrong, you know. But we have many ports, so this was uh, uh, trafficked here, clearly, and we don't know where that origin is yet. We can use some sophisticated analysis, isotope, mm -hmm. because each uranium deposit has a, has a unique signature. Uh -huh. But that equipment we don't have yet, the U.S. has it, we can ask assistance from them or the IEA. Okay, very, very but quickly. it's also possible that they sold this outside the country. Yeah. You know, okay. Yes, doctor. Party. We don't know that. But uh, rest assured that uh, the right, correct authorities, apart from the PNRI or law enforcement authorities, also, uh, you know, helping out in this investigation for the trafficking part because that's also not good. Yes, ma'am. Uh, yeah. the, there is a, a DTI office, Strategic uh, Trade Management Office, that we're coordinating with also. And then we have a trained uh, CBRN. Actually, I, you know, the NBA did a very good job. Uh, and then, uh, and we also, we, it is the first time that we were involved in an operation like this. So, uh, so it was a learning experience for everybody. But uh, uh, we, our, our, our people did, uh, uh, did this very well. And half of the people who did this are women. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's not easy because they had to be hazmats, you know, in, correct, in, correct. In, and then in the, uh, in the operations, you have to wake up at 3 o'clock in the morning to try to trap these people. But oh. they were caught. In the end, they were caught because they were caught. We definitely have to amend our laws. Uh, thank you for bringing that up. Yes. And uh, we have to keep on watching out for this. In the meantime, thank you so much for updating us and joining us tonight on The Big Story.